have been trying to collect videos, images, claims, content from a variety of different uh, social media networks to try to piece together what is actually happening um, over in Israel and Gaza. My name is Kalina Koltai and I am a researcher and trainer at Bellingcat. It's been shocking to see so many people fall for misinformation. Particularly in these times of, of emotional charge distress, a lot of content tends to go viral. One of the claims that kind of like stuck out to us was this claim that Israel had destroyed and attacked the third oldest church. That is an emotionally charged story because it's an historic building, it has to do with religion. This church is actually located further away, outside where we think this blast range could have possibly been. What we found interesting is that there was like a statement that was later found put out by the church itself saying that they were not bombed. So from there, we wanted to take the approach of not just saying like, hey, we are taking this church at its word. We wanted to see if we can actually pinpoint where those missiles were hit. going on telegram channels. We were able to find actually other angles of the same bombing occurring. From there, using uh, Google Maps, we look for unique identifying um, components. So if it's the building or particularly Paul structure, that really helps us try to narrow down where these missiles hit. We then later did find a claim from the UN that said like a couple of schools were hit. And we're like, all right, let's look to see where these schools are located. And again, using Google Maps and searching around, we were able to pinpoint and say, hey, we suspect that maybe one of these bombs actually hit a school instead of the church. We were able to conclude that the, not only was the church not hit because it wasn't in the right area, but that a school was also hit. The claim that this is from a recent strike is true, but the claim that it was hit the church was false. I think one of the toughest questions around misinformation is who is behind the misinformation. Sometimes it's really clear to say like this one actor, this one account is the one who started it and it went viral from there. But sometimes it could be a number of smaller accounts um, and it's sometimes really muddy. And to be clear, uh, misinformation and disinformation are two different things. So misinformation is um, something that people are sharing that might be misleading or incorrect, but oftentimes the person sharing doesn't even know. Comparatively to disinformation, which often has the explicit intent to misinform and perhaps persuade people to believing one thing or the other. One tactic that you'll see happen oftentimes, particularly in, in cases of, of breaking footage, is someone will use an old piece of media, so an old image or an old video, and reshare it uh, with the uh, incorrect context of what that content's originally from. This video that appeared to be shot at night claimed that it was Hamas shooting uh, missiles at Israel. And it is a very difficult video to geolocate to see exactly where this is, but we were able to find an older version of the video. We think this video actually occurred in Syria. Uh, if we can go off of that, we can at least come to the immediate conclusion that it was not actively happening today. One thing you'll sometimes see go viral is footage that doesn't have anything to do with like an explosion or a particular conflict or may not even be from that area. And one example is uh, this footage of what appears to be a paragliders, people parachuting in across the sky. And I think this went particularly viral because there was footage from the music festival that had Hamas paragliders coming in. So this video was going viral on a variety of different platforms with the claim that this was uh, paragliders who were uh, from Hamas landing in Israel. One thing that was particularly tricky and interesting about that is some of the misinformation videos that went viral maybe sometimes put text or covered over the images or the building that made it easier to geolocate and easier to debunk. So all you really see are uh, men flying down from the sky. Reuters actually did a, a geolocation on using a, a building that we see in the shot. Going onto TikTok, I was actually able to find an older video of this occurring. And we were able to say, confirm, yes, this building, which we double checked with Reuters, it was actually located in Cairo in Egypt, so not in the right area, and also occurred in September. Not only that, we know that this building was near a military school, so it's reasonable to assume that these were potentially military students practicing parachuting and paragliding in. So the things that we found that were untrue about that video is that it was not Hamas soldiers, it was not taking place in Israel. 
One of the most powerful tools in misinformation is that it creates an emotional response in us. And so when I find content online that makes me generate like, oh my gosh, makes me feel something, that's actually a really good signal to check, like, is this true, is this not true? We feel really compelled to want to share that with everyone. A an example of really emotionally charged content that we, we tackled is this uh, footage that claimed that a girl was being beaten and tortured at a concert. And this is tricky because we uh, had already heard and verify claims that there was an attack by Hamas at a music festival. So what we ended up doing is trying to uh, see where did this footage originate from. And one of the techniques that we can use is a reverse image search on a video itself. So oftentimes what we need to do is actually take multiple still frames from a video and to see if we could find that being posted anywhere else. Uh, we were able to actually to find the, where that video originated from and it matched a story uh, from 2016 in Guatemala. One of the other clues we looked at is uh, actually audio. It, that could be a really useful tool because if you'd imagine on TikTok, people overlay audio of them speaking over videos, um, sometimes adding music to things, which can make it harder sometimes to even find out the original origin. With this video, um, when we're listening to the audio, it didn't appear to sound like the original audio. <laughs> Initially, uh, because it seemed like it was in the open air, as if someone was on the ground there recording the footage. But when we were listening to it, it actually sounded like someone was at a different location, like if someone's recording in a closed, tight space versus being there physically on the street. So while this was a real, true, and distressing case, it was not representative of, the, uh, of any of the people who were at the uh, concert. So another video that we saw trending on the internet shows sort of almost like a city on fire. That's what it appears like. It's very red in the video. It claimed to say, here is all these fires, all these buildings being damaged, and this was the work of Israel. What we did find is that this was a bit of an older video, which actually came from TikTok. We were able to then geolocate the video to actually being in Algeria. It was actually a response to a winning football match. And so these were actually people celebrating. These were fireworks. It was a time of excitement. It was not an attack by Israel onto Gaza, but in fact, it was a bunch of fans celebrating in Algeria. One thing we found particularly surprising and interesting is that there has been a fair amount of video game footage used as misleading content. In particular, there was actually some video game footage that I found online that people misappropriated it saying it was Arma 3. And I found the original TikTok account that actually shared the footage and they were very clear in their account. They say, I, these are all fabricated videos. They're using a software or game called Digital Combat Simulator. It says it in all the descriptions. However, I was was able to find that this uh, person's video footage was then downloaded and then shared across not just TikTok. With the context, here is actual live attacks happening. So here's a missile that Israel is shooting off, or here's a missile that Gaza is shooting off. But in reality, these were all digitally fabricated videos, and in some cases misattributed to Arma 3. So sometimes even when the debunks are, are right, there could still be a bit that needs to be done. We got word that there was a attack, an explosion at a hospital in Gaza, the al Baptist Hospital um, in Gaza. Initially, we started seeing claims that this was an attack by Israel, uh, that it was IDF that shot a missile and hit the hospital. And then shortly after, we started seeing the claim that this was actually a failed missile attack by Hamas. We know very little so far. There's very conflicting stories. A lot of analysis started happening publicly on channels like Twitter or X. Some of the footage that was started to appear, some of it was actually old footage, but there was also fun footage that was brand new that we couldn't necessarily find anywhere else on the internet. We were able to accurately geolocate to the right location that we are, are confident is of the recent um, attack, the recent explosion. From there, we were able to piece together what looked like the a crater. We were able to find one that seemed to be a recent crater that's related to the attack. Based on the size of the crater, from the composites we were put together, from footage on the ground, we were able to assess that, say, this is a smaller crater, it's not a huge crater. There are theories out there that if it was a JDAM that might have exploded in the air and then landed, it could have caused that, or it could be something that might be consistent with the smaller munition. But right now, we just don't know. We know that, unfortunately, there is loss of life here, right? We, we can't confirm independently just yet how many people have died from this attack. We do know that it was at the hospital. We do know it's a crater. We can't determine the size of ammunition. 
I think it's really important for us to figure out the truth in the case like this because it, it's so egregious. It's a case of an attack at a hospital. And if it was intentional or even accidental, regardless, it's really important to know what happened there. One thing that's been particularly telling uh, about this uh, conflict is how many people and even um, accounts that we normally think to be trustworthy have, have fallen prey to misinformation. We see this also happening with Biden, with um, other officials. Some of the danger with misinformation is the ability to sway the public. When we're looking at misinformation online, it's one thing we always have to be cognizant of is what is the goal of this misinformation? Is it just to make money? So is the goal to cause uh, distrust and Islamophobia or anti-Semitism or maybe a little bit of both? One thing that I often recommend to my friends, my family, my colleagues, to everyone, particularly in this day and age, is to actually verify across multiple sources. It's, it's really important for us to take a breath, right? We need to take the moment because we're, all desperately, all of us are trying to figure out what is going on in the world. We're trying to like suss out what is real and what's not. And sometimes that takes time.